Hello everybody. In this video I'm going to show you how I painted a portrait of my wife Brenda and how I started with a base layer and then I worked the painting building it up and up and making it a bit more 3D so I'll go through the stages with you. So I'm just painting on a white canvas and um, you could tone your canvas to like a mid-tone if you wanted to to make it easier but because I've been painting such a long time I just tend to just to start painting on a white canvas. Um, it was only a cheap canvas as well for this, which I should use a better canvas with, with it being my wife. But um, anyway, I used a Winsor & Newton canvas and um, it's a cotton canvas. I usually use um, linen canvases. Um, in fact, I've just bought some dye bond panels. So I will be trying those out with some paintings because I do prefer more of a smoother surface for painting on. So anyway, um, I started off just uh, by painting Brenda's hair in. Painted a little bit, um, you know, not fine because I'm going to be going over it again. So I just want to get the values in really and um, just get the impression of her hair in. And then start working my way down onto her forehead. So I'm just going to work my way down. And um, just as um, I'm progressing through this I'll just tell you what paints I'm using so um, I've got my list down here <laughs> so I've got titanium white then I've got a Michael Harding warm white I'll explain that later then I've got old Holland yellow brown raw umber um, uh, terra rossa which is like a that's like the base for skin tone like it's like a a low chroma red and then more of a higher chroma red which is a senilia red you could use cadmium red if you wanted to then alizarin claret so that's more of a permanent version than alizarin crimson but very similar color that's michael harding as well and um uh, what else have we got there so got ultramarine blue viridian um then indian red ivory black and when you're painting in the um, the shadow areas on a painting um, it's good to use transparent paints and um, so I also used uh, transparent oxide red transparent oxide yellow um, burnt umber but that was more for the background color when I get to the background around Brenda I couldn't really in that moment I couldn't really think what colour to use so I just got rid of all the white around her and painted some burnt umber which I'll go over I'll paint over that but you leave some of it to show through so um, what else did I use so the when I get to the finishing touches um, especially for areas like around Brenda's mouth I'm using um, quinacridone red because that's very transparent and so the paint medium I'm using is Galkid Light by Gamblin. Um, so it dries pretty quick. So it'll be, um, when I paint this, um, the first layer, the, the painting will be um, dry the next day. So I can carry on working it. I would prefer, when I get onto the, the second, when I start working over the, the base layer, I did find it was um, drying a bit too quick for me, but um, if you go to Gambling, um, they've got um, a good Instagram site and they've got a really good website, but they do show how you can mix, say, linseed oil with the Gambling Light to um, make it a bit more slower drying. But um, anyway, it's the first time I use it, so I just, you know, paint it with it straight from the bottle, really. I, If I was going to paint this again, I'd probably use um, the other Gambling a product I really like, um, which is the um, the Gamelin um, Neo McGilp, which um, it's more like a gel, but it does dry slower, which is what I prefer really. It was okay using the uh, Gamelin light during the uh, the first stage of painting because I was being a little bit quicker with this, so uh, the painting was a little bit patchy. Because I'm going to paint over it again, I don't want to refine it too much, um, but I did. At the same time, I did take my time a little bit because in the back of my mind I was thinking maybe if I painted some area 
first time pretty good it'd just be a bit of tweaking around but i think i ended up painting over most of the um, painting again when i when i do the second layer so yeah i'm just working my way around the painting so um, you can see i've done brenda's uh, forehead and um, eyes and nose and uh, just going doing painting just um, under a nose there, just around the, the filtrum area. And like I say, I will go over all this again. So this is like the initial painting stage. And I just want to explain when I'm painting the shadows in, I, I thought I might have used a bit too bright light. Um, I often do paint portraits using natural uh, just using daylight but I, I used some um, studio lighting and um, maybe it was a bit low the lighting or a bit too strong so on the side of Brendan it did create very strong shadows and when I, I, I really like the photo so I thought I'd go with this um, but um, I thought I, I can always um, lessen the shadows if, if they look too too um, too much and the reason um, I've put on my palette. I've got quite a lot of paints on there. I did start when I started painting using limited palette, and so I still quite like using a, a limited palette sometimes, especially if I was doing um, a la prima painting. But um, it's quite handy to have the colours that you need, and so you're not mixing up over and over with the limited palette. So that that's one of the reasons why I've got so many paints on, and um, just to be a bit more efficient. So the shadow area is when I was using the transparent colours. So I was using the um, the oxide uh, yellows and uh, reds and the alizarin claret. And um, you know, if you need to turn it down, ultramarine blue is very transparent as well. So I was working the shadow area, trying not to make it look too red or you know too blue. And um, so. I was really working it. So if I'd put, say, too much um, orangey colour in for the shadow, I could tone that down with some blue. So if you look at the colour wheel, you've got uh, blue is the opposite to orange. So that's why I'm using um, a few different transparent colours, just so I can tweak around with it. And the reason, the good reason for using transparent colours in the shadow area is because it, it creates kind of a richness um, I think the light can pass through and um, it seems to create more of a depth to the painting. So um, yeah, so I was just using those um, transparent colours around the shadow areas. So um, looking back down at the, uh, the video now, I'm just working on uh, Brenda's top. So I just used um, ultramarine blue for this and some black and um, may, maybe I might have used a little bit of um, burnt umber as well just to tone the blue out in, in certain areas. So yep, so once I get the um, paint on Brenda's top, yep, I can go onto the background, which I'm doing now. So like I said, I'm just using burnt umber for, for this, just, just so I can get rid of all that white and um, kind of bring Brenda's image forward a bit and probably help me um, choose my values um, a bit better when I get on to work in the second stage. So now I'm going to start building uh, Brenda's portrait up. So I want to make it a bit more three dimensional. So I'm just going to start looking at all those different areas like round her eye and uh, forehead and the shadow areas and just try to uh, create a bit more depth to the portrait and also correct any mistakes and um, just yeah start really enhancing the painting so you can see there that I'm just painting around Brenda's eye so this area where it's a bit darker I'm trying to make it a bit darker and then maybe a bit lighter and go slightly darker just to create that form and um, yep and on to the other eye um, the other eye kind of Brenda's left eye wasn't right really well it was left that's why <laughs> um, so yeah it almost looks like it's a little bit swollen but um, I'll, I'll soon correct that with the uh, 
uh, with the paints, just getting that, um, just getting the values right there, and um, you just just tweaking around with it. So yeah, always try to get, remember to get your values right from uh, the areas going towards the darkness and towards the light, um, and then that will create that um, three-dimensional image around her face. Um, yep, working down onto her nose now. Yeah, I'll just tell you something a little bit about the paints that I use. Um, Terra Rossa is um, really good um, for uh, as a base for um, skin tones. So it's, it's a bit a little bit reddish, um, so you can obviously tweak it around with it by adding a bit of yellow, um, a little bit of blue, etc. Um, so that's why that's on the palette. And um, raw umber is really good for lowering the um, the chroma or you know darkening the colours. It, it works really well. It's probably one of my favourite colours. The um, Indian red is really good if you mix that with ivory black for creating the um, shadow areas like around the mouth. Um, one of the reasons I use the I've got titanium white and warm white so I'll use a titanium white generally just for the really if I really need um, like a bright white maybe on the um, Brenda's necklace I mean, I'm not sure if I, if I use it there or not but um, the warm white is um, by Michael Harding is um, you know is perfect for doing portrait painting but I always have the titanium white on the palette as well just in case I need it um, yeah, ultramarine blue is fantastic for obviously painting Brenda's top. Uh, the to paint Brenda's uh, mouth, I would use like the Cinellia red and alizarin crimson, and the um, Indian red, ivory black. Uh, sometimes you you don't want the mouth, um, the lips. You know, unless you're wearing lipstick, you don't want it to be like too red across there. So you can tone that uh, red down with the other colors. Um, you know, if you tone it down with yellow, it's gonna obviously make it a bit orangey, but um, yeah, and I also, when I'm painting, I'm painting by eye. So I've got my laptop up to the left of me. So um, uh, the picture of Brenda on Photoshop, and so I can zoom in and out if I'm, um, you know, looking at different areas. Also, I can use the color checker tool in Photoshop if I want. If I wasn't sure about some area, um, some you know, the complexion, I can you know have a look at the. Um, I can zone in on that color on Photoshop, and I really look um, what color I need to you know to mix to get to that. If I wasn't sure. Um, yeah. Also, I pre-mix. Um, I buy the. Um, empty paint tubes and I pre-mix uh, several colours from dark to light and um, um, also some um, more like neutral lower chroma colours just to complement the, uh, the other colours.
And just to let you know, I do have a Patreon channel if you're interested in learning to paint. And on that, before this video starts, I, um, I've done a little video of my uh, palette and all the colours on it and, you know, how to mix skin tones, etc. And last of all, I signed the painting. So thank you for watching and hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned lots from it. And any questions about painting, please leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. And um, okay, so I'll see you on the next video.